Hey, welcome back. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show, and we're going to do some more of this empirical testing of this RTL-SDR.com antenna system. And once again, I have the small legs, the two short pieces, set up. And the antenna is up there. You should be able to see it. It's up there on top of a um, bookcase. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see the effects of moving the antenna around. Now, I, I th would think that the orientation I should have, but let's go back to the orientation I have. So I have the antenna with the two parts of the dipole pointing kind of at 45 degrees to the sky. Probably the better configuration is to have it vertical. So what I'm going to do is, again, this is kind of kludgy, but I'm going to move the antenna around and see if I can detect any improvement of the reception. So I'm going to bring up my uh, screen capture software again so you can see, so I can see, where the camera's pointing. Okay, so stand by, and uh, it's pointing to the right place. Now, I may, I may move the antenna out of the view of the camera and not notice it because I want you to still see the map. Now, this is um, that software running that is Capturing the transmissions from the transponders on the aircraft, which is giving position and um, location and speed and altitude and all that good stuff. So let me get this cursor out of the way here. So right now, and, and I, I may have misled you a couple of times, the symbol is not where the aircraft is. Where the aircraft is is down here at the end where it says all the information about the flight number and everything. Not where the symbol is. I think a couple of times I pointed to the symbol and that was incorrect previously. So I'm going to now, and you can see it, but I can't see it because I have that screen off. I'm going to grab the antenna. It'll probably, like I say, it'll probably go out of view. And I'm going to adjust it so that the two sections are straight and I'm going to lay it down, I'll try to lay it down so that they're vertical and I don't know if it's going to stay. Let me try this and see if I can get it to clamp on to that book. Well, it's not quite vertical and they're not quite straight. There, it's probably going to fall. Uh, let me set something on it to keep from having it fall. Okay, there we go. Now I do have the lead kind of, let me see if I can get out of the way of the plane of the, whoops, of the two dipoles. Move that up over that way. Okay, I think that's the best orientation for receiving signals from these aircraft. Now, you could probably know, and I don't know, uh, whether anything improved. Now the aircraft are still moving and unfortunately I didn't have one real far away at the time I started moving the antenna. Let me check my screen capture software and see if you can see. Yeah, you can still see the antenna. Where's my stick? So now it is vertical as opposed to in the previous video in the beginning of this video where it was pointing towards the sky at 45 degrees. So I think this is a better orientation. Now we're going to see, uh, let me get this out of your way so you can see the map. Now we were able to track uh, one aircraft and there's, there's a lot of conditions that are changing so kind of hard to pair, compare apples and oranges. But we were able to track at one time on this antenna an aircraft that was up near Inverness 
in one time in one case it was near Inverness in one case just the icon like right now the icon is up near Inverness but it says the aircraft is way down here which we just lost now here's an aircraft that is even further north well it's about about the same distance north as Inverness but it's straight north so it's a little closer it's over the water now here's this aircraft that came back and we're just going to kind of track things and see if we can see any appreciable difference like I say there's so many variables here it's unbelievable uh, but if this the actual aircraft which is down here if it gets past this point right here then it is further away than the other aircraft that I was tracking in the other video again a lot of conditions are changing so I'm just going to try to stay out of the way of the camera and uh, watch this thing track and let me see if I, I click on this uh, what did I do wrong Ooh, boy, it's position. It's crank. It's moving out now. I'm trying to figure out what aircraft it is. Maybe I have to click on the icon. No, I, I thought I could click on one of these places here and it would highlight the one that I clicked on, but it's I'm not succeeding there. Clicking all over the place. Click the icon. No. Let me uh, see if I can read it. N717FR. N71. Where is that over here? N71. Oh, the ch it keeps changing. N71. I can't find N71. N71. Must be off the screen. Oh, here it is. That's why I couldn't see it. It's way down there. Okay, there it is. So it's at 38,000 feet right now. And it's tracking out at. 445 knots so it's moving out and I'm still tracking it so if we see a, a significant distance difference from what I had before then this is probably the better orientation of the antenna and like I said you uh, the reception on any antenna be it shortwave or whatever, can vary depending on where the antenna is located, how high it is up in the air, what trees are around it or other obstructions. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Now this is definitely, right, let me zoom in a little bit here. Yep, put down. So before uh, the first antenna, uh, first further aircraft I was tra we were tracking is right in here in this area. Now this one is north of there. I wonder if I could get 250 miles. There's a, uh, whoops, I lost it. There's another program like this one that will show you distances from your receiver, how far the aircraft is ground distance not from your house to the aircraft in the sky but the ground distance i don't know how to do that in this program let me see what's in the menu boy i'm still tracking that baby uh options options new what look at all these good things this thing will do Let's see if I can find anything about distances, speed, inches, da da da. Set your current location. Click set current location and drag the marker. Okay, it says my current location is this, which is not. Okay, let me set my current location. And <laughs> obviously it's not there. And if I drag the marker, I got to drag it about 2,000 miles. Oop, okay, where are we? Oh, we're getting close. Uh, no, <laughs> this is this is another part of the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think it is. 
It's so uh, zoomed in. It's hard. It's yeah. It's let me go across the ocean here. Oh God! Uh, can I find the United States? Hello, United States. There's a bunch of water there. Where are we at? Oh, well, that obviously didn't work. Let me zoom out here. I'm out in the middle of the ocean. Okay, we're getting there. So I got to grab this marker and move it down here. Whoop, there we go to Florida. And then I'll zoom in to get it more accurate. I'm learning something here. Okay, now where did we go? Hello, hello. South Carolina, North Oh, there we are. Okay, now I'm going to move. Oops, zoom in a little more. Now that we're getting closer. Ooh, this is exciting. Check it out. Okay, so we're going to move the marker. I'm right about... Oh, do -do 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 -do. Right about there. Now we can see what the distances are. Let's uh, zoom out. And so... But it didn't tell you numbers, though. Well, that's a bummer. It gives you these concentric circles, but there's no numbers on them. Let me, let me see if that's an option. Uh, option. Okay, I did that. Map. I'll select aircraft. And it did the circles. Qu quality. Distance. Show circles, yeah, show circles, but. So the circles are 20 miles. Well, it could be, let's make them uh, 25 miles. Okay, let's try that. So apparently um, these circles represent 25 miles. So this would be 25, 50. Let me zoom out a little more. Did I lose that aircraft? Okay, 25, 50, 75. And actually, I lost the aircraft. I was dinking around. Okay, so I was I was tracking an aircraft up here. Now, this particular aircraft is way down here. But I was tracking an aircraft that was up here. And that is 25, 50, 75 miles. So I was getting 75 miles. So my estimate in the previous show was off by a little bit. I was saying Inverness was 75 miles from me, but it was actually maybe 60 miles from me, line of sight. So let's, uh, so these are, I, I, the, the, uh, the, the icons are misleading. And it, you think the aircraft is here, but it's actually down here. So let's zoom back in a little bit here. And this aircraft is going this way, so it's not going to, well, it's going to get away from me, but I was hoping something would be going north. Whoop, there's one. But he's way down here. I'm just going to track this for a few minutes and then I'll uh, call it quits. But I think, I think the orientation I have the antenna right now is the best orientation. Uh, it is about a foot and a half from that window, the top of that window that I showed you before. Let's see if I can click on that aircraft. So that's right here. And it's at almost 36,000 feet. And it's doing 441 knots. So it's moving away from me pretty fast. So we'll see how far we can track it. And then we'll call it quits. Now, supposedly this line here on the aircraft, this dark blue line, is how long or is where I have tracked it with my receiver all that distance. 
And if I click on another aircraft, it'll show me the line for that particular aircraft. So we are at 36,000 feet. Probably won't go much higher than that. Now another thing this program will do, it will, it will announce to you the information about an aircraft. I got that muted now. Again, this is the software that if you go to the SDR Play webpage, this is one of the packages that you can download for the SDR Play. It's only for the setup. The way it's set up is only for the SDR Play. And this, uh, this particular website that's giving this information is Virtual Radar. That's, and that's the program, Virtual Radio. So you can use the program Virtual Radio on other dongles, but you have to set it up differently for that dongle. You have to have the proper drivers and everything. And I do have it set up for the, S, the RTL-SDR.com dongle down in my workshop, which is about 40 degrees right now, and I'm not going down there. Okay, so did we lose the, uh, yeah, we lost that aircraft. So he got up to um, just beyond 75 miles from me, and then I lost it. All right. So I, I, again, it's kind of kludgy testing, but I think by rotating the antenna, I have improved reception. I have it vertical now, and I believe you want vertical antennas for these transform aircraft transformers. I believe, I'm not positive, but I, I think that's the case. If you know, please let me know and I'll try it in a different orientation, like horizontal or something like that. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.